Hey guys, welcome back. We are at week six, cycle one science experiments, continuing our study of biology. So as a reminder, number one, we go over the definition of biology, which is the study of living organisms and their vital processes. Or again, for our littles, it's the study of living things. Um, so then I want you to go over your scientific method. Um, and go, just go over those parts. There's fun songs you can review, uh, but just go over each of those parts. In today's experiment, you can kind of walk through those pretty easily. So again, we have our question, which is our purpose. We then give them some background research um, or see what they already know about it. Make a hypothesis, do your experiment, um, then analyze your results, and then make a conclusion out of what you have done. Today, we're doing two experiments both of which um, trick and play around with our senses. Um, so we can review some memory work. What are our um, senses? See if they can name them all for you. Um, and our first experiment is just um, dealing with two of our senses, our taste and smell. Um, so you can, you know, first of all, give some background information just about talking about the five senses, um, see what they know, uh, maybe ask them, do you think your senses help each other? Um, do you think, um, you know, if you cover up your eyes, can you hear more clearly? Um, if you hold your nose, do things taste differently? Um, and um, you could show them some information or just gather more what they have. Our five senses do work together and God created that to enhance our experiences and when people have lost certain senses, like their sight or their hearing, their other senses do seem to be a little more refined. Um, and God creates us that we can compensate for some of those deficits um, that people are sometimes born with or get from various um, other circumstances. So it's pretty cool how that all works. All right, so our first experiment, your materials are an apple, vanilla, and each student will get a cotton ball. So in our campus, every student will get their very own little snack apple um, that will have been washed. Um, so we try not to share anything there. Um, and then tutors, you'll have a little um, container with a lid that has the vanilla already in it. So what we'll do is you when to talk to your kids. Again, we've talked about senses, your taste and smell. Um, and just to make sure, um, I don't think anybody would have any allergies, but anytime there's food involved, it doesn't hurt to make sure nobody has any allergies to apples or to being around imitation vanilla. So it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, so you're gonna tell your kiddos. All right, so we're gonna take a bite of an apple. And ask them, how does it taste? Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it hard? You know, what are you tasting in your mouth? What are the um, different types of taste that God's created on our tongues? See if they know um, the five different tastes that we're given. We've got the sweet, sour, or we have sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and the unami, um, which is that brothy or savory taste. Um, so which of those taste buds do they um are being used here and using your apple. All right, so now the question is, if we smell something different, we take a bite of the apple, is it gonna change the taste of the apple? Um, see, raise your hand yes or no. Then you're gonna just walk around with your little container of vanilla, have the kids just um, touch their cotton ball to it so you don't have to deal with straws and eyedroppers. And then you're just gonna have them smell it if they need, the littles might need a parent just to hold it in front of their nose. So they're going to hold it by your nose while you take another bite. And see if that changes this taste at all or their experience of the apple. For me personally, it still tastes like an apple, but it definitely tastes kind of like a vanilla flavored apple. Um, definitely tastes like it has a little more sweetness to it. Maybe like a vanilla um, candy or something would add to it. 
So it does enhance, for me, it enhances that sweet taste, personally. So, um, so that's, it does affect it. So then you want to talk about, well, why is that? Why does um, smelling something alter the taste? Um, and then talk about, analyze those results, talk about how we said previously, you know, God creates all of our different senses to work together to enhance our experience um, in this world, as well as animals use all those different senses, their, their touch, their hearing, um, as survival mechanisms as well. All of our senses play a very important role um, in surviving. So, as well as just experiencing the good things like apples. Um, so, that's pretty straightforward. Um, that's how we're going to run it. Um, and each kid then you can have them finish their apple, or if they don't like them, they can um, just toss them right in the trash, toss the vanilla and everything in the trash. Our second experiment is also dealing with our senses, except this one's dealing, dealing with our vision. This is a very basic optical illusion. Um, so again, our question is, um, can our eyes, the sense of our vision, be tricked? Just like our taste was tricked with um, changing the smell, can our eyes be tricked? Um, what do you think and why? So get the kids information, um, ask them if they've ever seen an optical illusion, um, and give some examples of what they might know. And an optical illusion is when something tricks our eyes into seeing something different. Um, kind of just give them a basic definition because we'll go back and give them some examples afterwards when we're done. So give them background research is just the defining what an optical illusion is. Say today we're gonna see if we can trick our eyes with an optical illusion. What you're gonna do, um, everybody has rulers, pencils and paper already in your bin. So you're just gonna get these things out, get, have every student get their own paper, and you're going to lead them through on the board, would be the easiest way to do this. Again, with the littles, you can decide, um, if you have enough parents, then definitely have them help and just have each kid do it themselves. Otherwise, you can just do it as a tutor demonstration up front um, and have the kids look from there. Um, so you're going to make two lines. You're going to label one A and one B. You're going to use your ruler so they know, I have you see here, so they know exactly that there's no tricks going on here. We're really doing it like it says. You're measuring four inches. So make one line, go down to B, and go zero to four, four inches. Okay, so you say, all right, we've got our two lines. On line A, you're going to make two V's, except they're going to go out like this. One and two. So we're going to make a V. It's not the prettiest V ever. And have them just do that. And the other one, you say, okay, you're going to make two V's, same size, except they're going to face the other way, like this. So you're going to make like an arrow. Have them add their arrows on there. Okay. Then you're going to say, all right, look at your two lines. Which one appears longer? And see what their opinion is here. So, um, kind of get a class opinion there if there's one that seems longer than the other. And generally, the one where it looks like we're pointed out here is the one that seems longer. Um, okay, I was just making sure it looked that way to me. I was just making sure I was right. So that's the one that generally looks longer. And that is because our eyes are tricked by looking at this open-ended um, line. So it looks like it's continuing on because it's open-ended versus this one looks like it ends at both arrowheads. And so this simple little thing, so say, okay, well, this one looks longer. Does that mean it is longer? And of course, no, we know we used our ruler. Each of these are four inches long. So why does that trick our eyes? Well, again, it's because our eyes are drawn to those open ends that make it look like it's continuing on, um, tells our brain something that's not true. 
Um, so these today, you can then show them some examples. Again, I love Nicole Liam's little things that she's made on CC Connected. Well, my tutors have this thing, but you can look at these various different um, optical illusions. You can bring in books that have optical illusions. These are just super fun to look at. Um, you know, what do you see here? A rabbit or a duck. Um, look at those various ones and give them some examples. Play around with that a little bit. And then you can end it with, um, with talking about this idea of how our senses can be tricked or deceived. The Bible talks to us very, very clearly that we as Christians and believers need to be careful because we can be deceived in this world. Not only our eyes and our taste and our smell can be deceived by tricks um, and by cool little fun things. Uh, Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And so the Bible warns us to be on our guard, to know that we can be deceived um, from things that look different and look good, but we know what is truth. So just like, um, you know, just like our apple experiment, it's still an apple. Even though it might taste different because our nose is tricked, it's still an apple. Even though those lines, one looks longer than the other, we know the truth is they're actually still exactly the same. So even though things of this world may seem, um, may seem like they should be true or may seem tempting or beautiful, always come back to what we know is the truth, um, which is the word. And so this is a great week to kind of use that to just put some nuggets of little truth in their brains. Um, about deception. Have fun!